the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give God the praise of the Lord. How many know that? Amen. 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 We serve a God that loves us so much that He gave His Son Jesus Christ to die for us on the cross. Amen. We love. We have a God that wants to give us strength and fill our hearts with such peace and such joy. How many want that? I know I do. Amen. I want to be able to receive that peace and joy in life. He wants us to, us to enjoy life. He doesn't want us just to sit back and do nothing at all and, and just wither away. Enjoy life while you still can. Let others see Christ living in you. Amen. When people look upon you, what do they see? Do they see a, a worn out dead Christian? Or one? One that is filled with such love and such passion. One that is filled with His Spirit. That's what I want to be like, don't you? But we have to keep moving forward in life. We're going to go through difficult times of life. We're not exempt, are we? None of us are exempt. But it's your choice, isn't it? It's your choice. God is there for us. He's always there for us. Just like His Word has promised us. That He will never leave us nor forsake us. The name of the sermon is Getting Through the Season of Grief. How many of us here today have been through the season of grief? We grieved for someone we lost. All of us. You know, it hurts, doesn't it? It's painful. Yeah. And sometimes in our life, we allow it to get the best of us. A few weeks ago, I'm going to pull up a stool here. Y'all mind if I pull up a stool here? Okay. A few weeks ago, my wife, Becky, she was here last Sunday. She entered her car that sits out there in a car show. This is the first time. She was all excited about it. A 2012 Grandma Blue Mustang. Ooh. And she got it all fixed up. I don't know much about cars. She knows more than me. That's pretty bad. <laughs> her dad was a mechanic and he taught her a lot of things. She put a, a brand new exhaust system on there. Roush tailpipes. Uh, a brand new intake and a lot of you know throttle body, BBK throttle body. I think it gave it more, more horsepower, and that really goes fast. But it was really looking nice that day, and she was excited about it. So we pulled the car in into the car show up in our little town called New Washington, Indiana, population of about seven to eight hundred. We weren't expecting many cars to be there. Maybe about 30. There was about 80 to 100. It was a fundraiser for the school. And a lot of people showed up. We had a great time together. And I, I started walking around and I noticed right across from the wife's car was this, I believe it was a 1974 Mach 1 Mustang. It was beautiful. Beautiful. And I talked to this young man who rebuilt it. And I noticed this big book that he had in front of it on display. And I was kind of looking at it. It used to be an old rust bucket. Nothing but rust. Somebody had neglected it. And that's what happens when we neglect automobiles. Today. I got a, I got some rust in my truck right now that I'm kind of neglecting. And it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But anyway. He turned this old rust bucket into something beautiful. He was proud of it. And you know what? God wants to do the same for us. Amen. You know, sometimes when we go through the grieving process, we become like this old rust bucket. Maybe not right away, but gradually. 
But God wants to do something beautiful in your life if you just let Him. There are a lot of people today, unfortunately, as they go through the grieving process, they allow themselves to get deeper and deeper and deeper. They continue to go down this downward spiral and they don't want anything to do with God anymore or with people anymore. They just wither away. And some people even take their life. I'll get to that story here in a moment. It's pretty sad, isn't it? But we allow ourselves sometimes to fall into that trap. And that's Satan's trap. We know that. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's good at that. He wants you to focus on that. Grieving process. Yes, we should grieve. Each and every one of us. It's a part of life. And we're never going to get over someone that we love. But we have to keep moving forward in life. We have to keep our focus on God. And He is the one that gives us strength to keep moving forward. My wife, Becky, she lost her father. Within the last 10 years, she lost her father, her brother at the age of 45 with cancer. Her mother, two years ago, we took care of them and we watched them die. And yes, it hurts her bad. But she gets her strength from God. Amen. She leans on God to help her get through. She knows where they're at today. She led her brother through to Christ. Amen. He didn't know Christ. He was at the VA hospital. He was a veteran. Cancer, eating his body up. And she led him to Jesus. And that's what helped her to get through. You know, God is so wonderful. He is so wonderful to us. I normally don't use my iPad. My printer wouldn't print this morning. But we'll see how it goes. Getting through the season of grief. We're going to focus on... 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 14 to 25. But again, God wants us to have a good time in life. An exciting time in life. There was a pastor who was raising money for his new sanctuary. He told his congregation one Sunday morning, if anybody will give $1,000, you can pick out your three favorite hymns. A little old lady in the back, raising her hand, she said, Pastor, Pastor, I'll do it. The pastor was so excited. Said, Thank you very much. And then he said, go ahead and pick out your favorite three hymns. And she stood up and she looked out to the congregation. And she said, I'll take him and him and him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's good to have laughter. It's good to have laughter in the church, in your life. In Proverbs 17, 22 says, A cheerful heart is good medicine. And it is. A cheerful heart makes life more enjoyable, doesn't it? But sometimes it's hard to enjoy life. Especially when we're going through the season of grief. Someone we love has passed from the scene. And there's a part of us that will never, never be the same. But sometimes we have to go through that season, each and every one of us. We will face that. And it's how we face that. And that's the way David feels in 2 Samuel chapter 12. Guess what? King David grieved for his son. His infant son had been taken from him. He died. And yet he found strength from God to keep going forward in life. David's strength didn't come from the moon or sun God, did it? No. David didn't consult sorcerers or mediums. 
David didn't dial 1 800 psychic hotline. David called out to God, and God gave him strength once again to get through. And that's what God wants to do for us. He wants to give us strength to get through these difficult times of life. I want to talk to you this morning how we can move forward in life, especially during the holiday season. That seems to be the toughest times, doesn't it? I know it is for my wife. You know, she's not, her mother's not there anymore. How they used to bake cookies together and pass them out to friends and loved ones. That hurts. It's a good memory, but still it hurts. You know, I think we can all agree that losing a child probably is one of the most traumatic things that we can experience. And I know several people who have lost children. And they often say, it's not supposed to happen this way. We learn in 2 Samuel that David committed adultery. And that was the reason for his child's death. One day when David was upon the roof looking out, David noticed a woman in the distance bathing. While all the men had gone off to fight and war, he couldn't take his eyes off of her and allow himself to fall into temptation as he looked upon her beauty as she bathed. There was, a, there was not only the lust in his heart as he fantasized about her, but sin for her. He had it in his mind that he wanted to be with her, spend some time with her. But it didn't matter because David's hormones was boiling over. He wanted to sleep with her. Here, this king, this mighty king, this king who loved God, he fell into temptation. None of us are exempt, are we? None of us. David slept with Bathsheba and she became pregnant. Unfortunately, the story doesn't end there. David falls deeper and deeper into sin. David comes up with a plan to get rid of Bathsheba's husband. So he sends Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, to the front line of the battlefield in hopes that he would be killed. And he was killed. David knew in his heart that he was doing wrong, but he still fell anyway. Into the temptation. To our amazement, David was a man that loved and praised God. But yet he still fell, didn't he? The Bible says that God, that David chased after God's own heart. And you're probably thinking, how could he have done that? He was a man that loved God. We're all human beings, aren't we? We're not perfect. We will only be perfect when we're with Christ someday. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 9, the prophet Nathan says to David, You are guilty. You are guilty. Because you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes. There will be consequences for your sinful behavior. And normally there is, isn't it? I know years and years ago, before God called me into the ministry, before I was a Christian, things that I've done, I've had to pay the consequences for, for my sins. But thank God He changed my heart, my way of living, and I praise Him for that. Amen. And so the story is really about how a lack of respect for God's Word brings grief to our lives. And the Greek begins in verse 15. The newborn may become sick for seven days. David pleads with God. Would you? I'd be pleading with God if that was my child. He says, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. He knew it. I committed adultery with Bathsheba. I got her pregnant. I had her husband killed. 
What I did was wrong. Don't take my baby. Don't take my child. He was begging God. But on the seventh day, the child dies. I can't imagine the guilt and the, and the grief that David is feeling right now. And I'm sure that Bathsheba is also feeling guilty and grieving for what they have done in the eyes of God. How does he get through it? How does he deal with this loss? How does he get back to having a close relationship with God? Number one, grieving is something that we all need to do at one time or another. It's normal. It's a normal process that we have to go through in life. Ecclesiastes 3, 4 says that there's a time to weep, a time to laugh, and a time to mourn, and a time to dance. We will experience all of those. You could be working, laughing with your co-workers, having the time of your life. Having a cup of coffee with someone during break, but later that night, you go home and you're all alone. You've lost your spouse. That would be difficult. I don't know if you know Brother Herschel Duncan. He's an old evangelist, one of my friends. He lost his wife a few years back, and he told me. He said, Chuck, the hardest time is going back home. Sitting there at night. <clears throat> he said he cries. He said he'll never forget the love for his wife. But he knows that she's in a better place. But it still hurts inside. But God gives him strength to keep moving forward in life. He continues to preach today. And witness to people today. You see, that didn't stop him. The devil wanted to stop him, but he didn't allow it. Because his strength he found in God. Even though it hurts and it's painful. You know, there's nothing in the Bible that says, it's been 60 days now. Put down your tissue. It's time to stop. Is sometimes it just it's just not that easy. It's not that easy. Sometimes it's very difficult. But by God's grace, you move on with your life, don't you? You must move on with your life. But you never forget the good times that you shared together. About eleven years ago, I'm sorry, about fifteen years ago, my father died. It still hurts. It's still painful. I remember all the good days that we shared together. All the good times. We used to hunt together, fish together, go to flea markets together. But now, I can't do those things with him. Yeah, it hurts. It's painful. But I know without a doubt that he is in a better place. Because I know that he gave his heart to the Lord. Amen. And through his sickness, he developed cancer, lung cancer. But despite the pain and the suffering that he has been going through, he continued to witness to people for Jesus, about Jesus. Amen. He was a wonderful father. A wonderful husband to my wife, to my to his wife, my mother. He took good care of us. He was always there for us. I'll never forget him. There are moments, there are times now that if I'm going fishing somewhere, that thought just enters my mind. And sometimes those tears come down. I say, Dad, I know you're in a better place, but I still miss you. I know where my strength comes from. And that's from God. He helps me get through. Just like he does you. Amen. You know. 
We need to take care of ourselves spiritually as we go through the grieving process. Like I said before, Satan wants to do everything within his power to destroy you. He wants to destroy your soul. And sometimes he does that to people. But we must be on guard. We must protect ourselves from Satan. Especially during this time when we are grieving. Because we're down. And he knows that. We're weak. And he's going to come on in there. And he's going to say to you, look what God has done to you. God didn't help you. He didn't spare your spouse or your child. He took them. He's going to throw all those thoughts in your mind. And then you're going to be feeling guilty and angry at God. And maybe even leave the church or maybe even leave your relationship with God. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes that happens. But we must always remember that God does love you. Amen. God does love you. And He desires to have a relationship with you. Spiritually. We need to take care of ourselves spiritually. Be in church. Pray to God. Each and every day. Ask God to God guard your heart. And Christians, if you know somebody that is going through that process, be there for them, for that support. Be there for them. Pray with them. Encourage them. We need to do that. We need to show them that we also love them. And to help them along the way. Physically. We need to take care of ourselves physically. How many people love to eat? We love to eat, don't we? <laughs> you ever noticed after a funeral? We always eat, don't we? We always eat. You know, spend time with each other, eating, fellowshipping. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. But there are so many people. After they lose a loved one, they just fall apart and don't want to eat anymore. And begin to wither away. We need to take care of our physical body. You know, exercise is a good thing as well. That relieves the stress. How many people exercise? Oh. <laughs> but we love to eat, don't we? <laughs> I need to get back that that myself. <laughs> there was a veteran that I met up in Indianapolis at a conference me and Becky went to uh, probably about a month ago. It's called the Battle Mind, talking about veterans. When they come back from overseas, from combat, we need to pray for our veterans, our military. Amen. You just don't know what they go through. Some of them take their lives. Unfortunately. This young man that was speaking that day. He got blown up in, a, in Afghanistan, in a Humvee. He lost all his buddies that were with him. He was badly injured. He had a service dog with him that day. He had a scooter to get him around. He used to be married. When he came back home, his wife, <clears throat> was uh, near death. She had diabetes real bad. And eventually she passed away. He was a young man too. <clears throat> and he said, I had nothing to live for anymore. 
Here he is badly injured. His wife's dead. You know, you can just imagine what's going through his mind. He didn't have Christ. <clears throat> he said his wife always went to church and always invited him to go to church. But he never would go. He tried to hang himself on one occasion. His service dog kind of saved him, he said. <clears throat> Second time, he owed me. His parents rushed him to the hospital. They put him on a ventilator. The doctor said, he's not going to live. So they had to make a decision. So they took him off the ventilator. But he lived. He lived. Third time, he took a lot of rat poison. He ate rat poison. He was that miserable. He was grieving for his wife. And plus, experiencing all the things that he went through in Afghanistan. Again, they took him to the hospital. He wasn't expected to live. But he lived. He lived. He gave his heart to Christ. I said, wow. You see, his wife had been praying for him. And now he goes around telling his story. How God is so filled with grace. How God gave him the strength once again. To keep moving forward in life and to share his testimony to others, to help others. Yeah. I went up to him after he spoke. I said, I said, you know, your wife has been praying for you to get to church. He said, yes, I know. He said, God is good. God is so good. I said, God's got a plan and a purpose for you. I said, he knew your heart. He knew your heart. And he's using you to share this sto these stories. You know, that's, that's amazing. It's amazing. What God can do in us and through us. Pray for our military. A lot of them. I, I want to say there's... Believe I may be wrong. Uh, Twenty die every day. I think that's what it is. They commit suicide. That's pretty sad, isn't it? Yeah. That's pretty sad. You just don't know what they what they're up against, what they face, what they have seen, what they have done. You know, with God's help, we can get through. Yeah. We can get through. Yeah. Lean on God in those difficult times of life. We're, each and every one of us are going to experience difficult times. Call out to Him. Cry out to Him. Like David did. Hear this mighty King cried out to God. And God gave him strength to get through. We are no different. There's been many a time that I've cried out to God for strength to help me get through. When I've lost someone in my life that I love. This morning, what are you going through? What are you up against? What are you facing right now? Maybe you don't know Jesus Christ. Maybe you don't have a relationship with him. Maybe today is the day for you to come and to receive Christ as your personal Savior.
You can't go wrong. And then enjoy life. Stop living a life of sin. That's no way to live. Where's that going to get you down the road? <laughs> One way ticket to hell. If you continue that lifestyle, I want to be where Jesus is at someday. I want to be able to see his face someday. And for him to welcome me home, don't you? Amen. Live your life for Christ. Celebrate it. Celebrate your life. Knowing that Christ lives within you. If you're a Christian and you're just walking around, you know, with maybe a bad attitude, an old sour face all the time, there's no joy, pray about that. <coughs> pray about that. You know, we shouldn't be walking around like that, like no sour puss. All the time, a nasty attitude. We need to let people know that Christ lives within us. Amen. Let your light shine ever so brightly. Amen. Or maybe today, you're going through that grieving process. And you just don't know how to handle it. I'll tell you how to handle it. Call out to Jesus. Call out to Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, help me get through this. <clears throat> Give me the strength and the power and the ability to get through this. I need your help, God. I need your help. And guess what? He will be there to help you get through it all. Yeah. I'm a witness. He's done that for me. He'll do that for you. I'm no different than you are. Let us stand. Getting through the season of grief. We can get through. You know that church? We can get through with God's help. With God's help. Don't be like an old rusty bucket. Like an old rusty car. Just withering away. Do something about it. Enjoy life. Enjoy life. The altar is open. If anybody wishes to come and pray this morning, if God is dealing with your heart, why don't you come and pray? Do we have a song this morning? Let us pray before they sing. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your word today, Father. We thank you, God, for your love and for your mercy. And we thank you, God, for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. And I pray, God, if there's anyone here this morning that doesn't know you, that doesn't have a relationship, God, with you, I pray, God, that you speak to their heart today. I pray, God, that they come before your throne and confess their sins and ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into their heart and live and claim you, Lord, as their personal Savior. And if there's someone this morning, Lord, here this morning that is hurting, that is, their heart is filled with such pain as they're going through the grieving process, God, just be with them, Lord. Just wrap your loving arms around them, God. And give them the comfort and the strength. And fill their heart, God, with such peace and joy once again, Father. Help them, Lord, not to give up on life. Lord, just be with them. And lift them up, Lord, today. God, we love you so much. And we need you, God. We need you every moment of the day. Without you, Lord, we are nothing. We are lost. But with you in our heart and in our life, we have so much to rejoice about. Help each and every one of us, God, to encourage others who are hurting, whose heart is filled with pain, sorrow. Help us to be Christ to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.